Uh, today we have the Future Technology Demonstrator, the FTD. Uh, what we're able to do is focus on uh, growth potential of systems and, and this gives a great example from a demonstration perspective, some of those systems that we can bring in today but meet some of that growth potential for the next five or ten years. Um, what we have, this is a hybrid electric drive technology, so that gives us uh, fuel savings, it gives us imp improved reliability, it gives us total configuration uh, choices around both armor and survivability, and also in terms of accommodating the, uh, the crew within the vehicle. So uh, this is, uh, has already amassed uh, hundreds of hours of drive time, so it's a, a high level of uh, technology readiness, it's a very mature technology, um, as is the effector you see there on the top of the vehicle, which is the Mark 38 tactical laser system. Uh, that's been trialed with the US Navy, and again, is at a high technology readiness level, uh, six or seven, so that means it's been operationally demonstrated. So with uh, the Mark 38 TLS, tactical laser system, it's based on the Mark 38 MGS, which is a machine gun system in use with the US Navy. What we've been able to do is to take the electro-optical sensor on the left-hand side of the system there, and then on the right-hand side is put a beam director on there. So that is where the tactical laser system is affixed, and together, as a high mature technology, it's able to work with either the laser or the machine gun in targeting um, whether it be uh, UAVs, UASs, or other uh, requirements. Because of the power generation of this vehicle with the hydroelectric drive, you have a, a megawatt of onboard power, it's able to now turn something uh, like this that was not able to work on a, a system or, or not necessarily able to be powered by a system like this, it's now able to, uh, to operate from onboard power alone. With this kind of uh, capability, it enables us to work with our program customer here in the US Army and, and with other customers, and also with the S&T community to help shape and inform some of the technology decisions we're going to be taking moving forward over the next five to ten years.